Hi, every um, early attendee who is waiting in the waiting room. Thank you so much for joining us on this Friday. Um, so excited to have so many of our current clients on this call um, to really learn a little bit or just get a refresher about all the tools um, that you have available to you as a Bandwango client. Um, I'm joined today by someone many of you probably know, our client success director, Ashley McKinney. Thanks for hey everyone, us. nice to have you here. Awesome. And then I, of course, um, my name's Emily Harris. I'm the Director of Marketing Operations. So um, it's likely that some of you have gone through these tools with me during our marketing and advertising calls. We've got a few updates, um, some things and processes that we're improving here at Bandwango. So Ashley and I will talk about those as we discuss our tools. Um, you can also find this webinar moving forward on bandwango.com. Um, under our resources section, there is going to be a landing page where you can rewatch this video and also find all of the helpful links that we're going to go through today. Um, so if you're joining us from this recorded webinar, then welcome. So glad to have you. Um, and you know, feel free to share this recording with any new staff members who may join your team after the fact. Um, these tools are always available to our clients um, so you know one thing to know is just um, making sure that your team is on the same page and knows um, all the things that you have access to as a bandwagon client um, so we're going to jump in we've got a few different things to cover today um, we're gonna start by um, addressing uh, service request tickets which is one of our new processes here at bandwango and then we're gonna go into some of the other um, tools that you have access to and um, other things that you should know about and take advantage of as um, Bandwango clients. So um, without further ado, I'm gonna kick it over to Ashley. Feel free to ask questions in the chat or in the Q&A as they come to you. Um, we'll be addressing those, of course, at the very beginning um, of each different little section that we're talking about. But also at the end of this webinar, we'll go through a Q and A um, session as well, in case you guys have any questions that are maybe outside of the scope of what we've talked about today, but maybe related to tools that you have access to as a family or client. So all that said, Ashley, do you wanna uh, kick us off? Absolutely, thanks so much, Emily. I'm going to go ahead and start sharing my screen. Uh, so as Emily mentioned, one of the reasons we wanted to host this webinar is because we have a lot of processes uh, that have changed at Bandwango. All of our wonderful clients have seen us you know, over the last two years go through a lot of growth. And with that has come some changing processes, some changing points of contact. So I think first and foremost, we just wanna say that we appreciate all of your willingness to go through those changes with us. And we wanted to make sure that we hosted a forum to have these new processes announced, or at least they've already been announced, but more reviewed with everyone. Um, hopefully some of you have already seen these or have been working with your success or service manager contacts um, to learn about these new processes and implement them. But the first thing that I wanted to talk about is the initial view that you see when you now log in to app.bandwango.com as a client has changed. Um, so you'll see here, we now have a resources section up top with these different forms. One of the things as we were kind of testing out these request forms for executing on certain tasks on behalf of our clients was the question of where do we host them? And so we have taken the opportunity to redesign this page and have these links which do feed into our project management system that we use Asana that hopefully you all are becoming familiar with as well. Um, we also now have your dedicated success manager's name and email address. Uh, we have gone through a lot of growth, as I've mentioned, over the last year. And with that, in March, we started a pretty large scale effort to a hire additional uh, resources from a, an employee standpoint and 
personally on the success team, I've hired five people since March. We've been training them and they have been taking on client accounts. So we wanted to make sure that our clients always, if they could get into app.vandwango.com, they were able to see who their dedicated success manager is. Um, as a reminder, your success manager is here to make sure that you are getting the most out of the platform. We do have four client facing departments that you may interact with at Bandwango client success, client services, partnership outreach, which used to we be talked about with merchant onboarding, but they have a new name that is partnership outreach. And then of course, our wonderful market, marketing operations department with Emily Harris and Aaron Griss and Darby Humphreys. So your success manager will be here. Um, we also have been utilizing our new campaign functionality, which is a new way to organize the onboarding process of merchants. So this is kind of a view that the client can have when they first log in with client statuses. Um, and you can see by campaign, which is the passes that we have created for you in your platform. Now, talking about the service request ticket, um, and this actually has gone through an additional evolution, but this, this ticketing system is really meant to be for a request of a change to any pass or campaign that is live and launched. So this is not a replacement for an act of pass build where, of course, when we start on a new initiative with you, when we have that project planning meeting with you, you will be invited along with any counterparts on your team that are involved in that process. You'll be invited to a full Asana project where all of the team members are having their tasks laid out. We're hitting hopefully our 45 to 60 day timeline as we lay it out. The question that we had is, how do we get those kind of system configuration edits to the correct service team member um, through a system once that pass has already launched? And so we created this form. You'll be able to access it, of course, through that homepage. We ask that you fill in your information and what pass this initiative is regarding. And then you'll see here, um, you can see you choose which department you're you're talking about. Originally, when we first launched this form, it was just for our services team, which is focused on configuration in the system. We realized that we had a lot of merchant onboarding, either additions or merchant removals from the system. So we added in our partnership outreach. And then we realized that it was quickly becoming a forum for our clients to easily put in whatever need they had no matter what department it was. And so this is a change that we've implemented in the last few days so that the client, you know, you always have that opportunity to email your success manager directly. However, if you're in this, you can put in, you're not sure which department it goes to, because I know that can be tricky to um, remember in your all day to days where Bandwango is not necessarily the only thing that you're working on or the only vendor that you're working with. And so you can go ahead and select you know, okay, I need an update to my pass. It's services and build out. I need a pass update and you can list the changes. If you wanna add an image or change out an image, you can upload that here. Um, put in a deadline for the request. Please note that we do ask for at least 48 business hours um, to analyze a request. Sometimes that request that comes in may take more time or we may have clarifying questions and that could elongate the process. So this is a, um, a deadline for you to put that may change. Once this request is submitted, it gets into a centralized Asana project that all of our teams are involved in. We uh, see these tasks coming in in real time and we're able to assign them to the team member that is either relevant to or on the services or partnership outreach side, the team member that has the bandwidth to complete that task. And so that is the goal really overall of that new system is to ensure that our timelines for executing the work that you need done gets completed in a timely manner um, because it can be assigned to someone who has the bandwidth to take that on. You're not necessarily waiting on a dedicated 
services or partnership outreach manager team member to complete a task because they may be in meetings that day or they may be out on vacation. Um, so the overall goal of this forum is to make sure that your guys' requests and changes are completed in a really timely manner. You'll notice too, just um, to further, I love a, a dynamic Asana form. The things change depending on if you need, you know, merchant additions or who you who you select. Um, if you're going to select my team success or Emily's team marketing, we're kind of comboed. Maybe you need the embed codes resent to you or sent to a different partner or something like that. Go ahead and get in here and play around with this form. That's what it's here for. And again, if you have any questions feel free to reach out to your success manager to have them answer. Yeah, and one thing, Ashley, I just wanted to point out because I think this is the question that I get often. So um, on the marketing side, if you need pixels added to particular landing pages, if you need pixels to fire on particular actions, that is something that our team can assist with. The most important thing about submitting a service request with a pixel um, request is making sure that we identify what kind of pixel it is and also what event you want it to fire on. The other thing that I think, um, Ashley, if you could dive maybe a little bit deeper into is the microsite creation, which is one of the drop downs, um, because I think that this is a question that comes up a lot. Can you just describe maybe when someone would use that request for microsite creation and, and what that might look like? Absolutely. And before I dive into that, Emily, it sounds like we need to update the form for an option for pixel placement. Yes. So, um, <laughs> On that note, this form is going to continue to evolve based on the needs that we see our clients submitting. Uh, so this will be kind of just a fun thing for, for all of us as we identify what really the needs are and how to best capture those. So yes, yeah, so Emily's uh, mentioned the microsite option. So we do, and we mostly use this for show your badge style savings passes or convention attendee savings passes as I'm desperately trying to rebrand them as we're putting them onto the Bandwango platform. Um, sometimes when we look at kind of offer creation or where we're driving traffic to, um, we're looking at these as channels. So obviously if we're integrating passes into your website, that is a channel that somebody can sign up or purchase a pass through. Um, for paid passes, one of the next things that we will probably be hosting a webinar is talking about our foray into third party distribution with OTAs. It's the same product, so it's still that attractions pass or that tasting pass, but the OTA, like a Viator or um, a Get Your Guide, those are a channel that someone can purchase that pass through. Um, so when we look at kind of convention attendees, of course, you know, there's the opportunity that you can uh, drive them to an overall kind of landing page for that savings pass if you want to. Uh, if you do decide that, you know, maybe you're hosting a citywide convention and you want to track out of that audience exactly how many people do sign up for the pass, we do have the opportunity to create a separate offer channel in our system. Uh, we can do that for you. It'll be the same pass. They will still have that same convention attendees pass that you built with us, but you can drive them to a specific landing page channel or you can embed that code specially into the microsite that you're creating. I know a lot of our clients, their meeting planner or their meeting services team, they create specific microsites already for these, um, these conventions that are coming in through their CMS system. We can integrate our elements to that. And the, what the great thing about it is in our digital report or in our reporting in our platform, you'll be able to see this convention led to this many signups and all of the activity related to that channel that we are, you know, creating specifically for that convention. How is that, Em? It was great. Thank you for going okay. through that because I think that's a that's a common question. Um, and then just a reminder for everyone, if you have questions as we're talking through some of these tools, feel free to put them into the chat or to the Q&A so that Ashley and I can answer them for you. Or if you want to wait until the end, um, we'll also do a little Q&A session there. Um, 
But otherwise, we'll just keep on trekking. Ashley, if you want to hit on our next topic, which is messaging. Absolutely. And I have another wonderful forum for our, our uh, client friends on this call. Uh, so as you guys hopefully all know, we do have messaging capabilities built into our platform. I'm going to talk as a reminder just a little bit about what those two options are and then run you through our form, which is how we're capturing how a client um, and what message that client wants to send to our their pass holders. So the first level of uh, messaging that we have is kind of one message that is sent to many pass holders based on a certain criteria. So say for example, the holiday weekend is coming up for Labor Day and you want to encourage your savings pass holders to get out and use their pass for Labor Day weekend. Um, maybe we are launching a restaurant month pass and you were able to get the pass built and available for sign up three weeks before the event launches, and yet they can't actually start checking in or redeeming their pass until say, you know, September 1st. So someone could have that pass for a few weeks and then on September 1st, we send out a message to all active pass holders. It's September 1st, restaurant week is starting. Feel, you know, check in on your pass and enter to win a giveaway. And so it brings up that pass to their mind. It gives them a link on that text message or on that email directly to their mobile pass that they can easily access it. Um, so we have, as I mentioned, the opportunity to send a message to a variety of different pass holders. The second option that we have is setting up messaging on an individual pass holder basis. And that's done when a certain action is taken on the mobile pass, like a redemption or a check-in. So I get a lot of questions from clients about kind of push notifications because we're used to the native app kind of structure where, oh, if I'm within um, you know 10 miles of something with this pat like a target, I can get a push notification or something like that. Because we are a mobile optimized website, we don't have that option. It's strictly not a functionality uh, built into the mobile browsers at this time by the companies you know that that host them. So instead, what we have in our platform is we can send a message. So if Emily checks in at Guy's Bison Burgers, and yet the ice cream place that's also participating on Ashley's Savings Pass is next door and offering a discount. We could send a message to Emily after she redeems her coupon for her bison burger a minute after she does it that says, we hope you enjoy your burger. Um, you know, the ice cream shop next door is offering 15% off, so come on over for dessert. Say we're doing a giveaway where we can, you know, you want people to get to five check-ins to be able to enter it into the giveaway. After their first check-in, we could send a message to them that says, thank you so much for using the pass. You know, you've got four more stops to get to your giveaway. Uh, all of these types of messaging are meant to engage with your pass holders, push them to take a certain action, et cetera, et cetera. And so I, I mentioned those because the success manager that is assigned to your account is the one who is going to set those messages scheduled out for you. Um, unfortunately, right now, we just don't have the capability in our system to have our clients actually utilizing that functionality. Uh, we don't have enough safeguards in place for that. And so it's our team that is going to be scheduling for the, these on your behalf. That is where we have this pass holder request form. So again, um, you can choose who your success manager is. And once this form is submitted, it's going to be directly assigned to them with a due date, they're notified it. And Asana is just a really powerful tool for our team to use to make sure that all of our tasks are being completed and the things that our clients want done are, are being done. Um, so you can say what date you want this message sent out. You can say um, time of day. We try to get these out as close as possible if you have a specific time. 
then that's great. But um, because of the way that our system works, especially for text messages, if we have multiple text messages going out at the same time, there is a queue for them to be sent out. And so we can't necessarily guarantee an exact time. Also, if we're texting a thousand pass holders, some people are gonna get it at 10.02 a.m. Some people are gonna get it at 10.30 a.m. just because of that queue. And then the form, as always, it kind of identifies different fields for what type of message we wanna send. So if you're sending out an email, you're gonna be asked to submit a subject line, a header line, if you want a custom email image being sent out. If you have a text, it's much more simple because of course there's really no formatting involved in a text message. I do want to say that we request that text be no more than 160 characters. We do that because some messaging platforms, if it's over 160 characters, it can split the messages into two bubbles and that can affect if we're sending a URL or a hyperlink. Um, and then as I mentioned kind of earlier, we can include the tokenized link to a user's specific passport in a message. So this form also asks if you want to include that, if you want to um, send them to a different link that you wanna type in, we can do that. And then as I mentioned, I went through the two options in the beginning of this to ensure that you guys saw, you can select, do I wanna send a message to a group of pass holders? And what type of pass holder is that? It is, is it everybody? Is it people who've completed a certain number of check-ins or redemptions? Uh, same thing with the individual pass holder. We say, you know, what, what type of thing do you want? And then what's the message, et cetera, et cetera. So I hope this is a pretty intuitive form for you guys to use. Um, if not, then, you know, please give us feedback to your success manager, but we've been using this for several months now, and it's certainly been um, helpful for our clients that we've seen as well as for our team. Uh, Julie Gilbert from uh, Niagara, Destination Niagara USA says, how far in advance do you wanna receive this request? We ask for 72 business hours before the date of when you want it to be sent out, especially if we're doing an email, we wanna be able to send you a proof of that email so that you can um, review it. And it just allows us to have enough notice to get these things scheduled. If there's any questions or feedback that we need to give to you about the message you're submitting, um, it just gives us that amount of time to complete that. Yes, and we also have a really good question by Amanda. What's the best way to capture wanting to send a text to pass holders with a certain range of check-ins? For example, a text for zero to one, a different text for two to five, six to 10. Ashley, can you address that? Absolutely. So the form will say, let's see. So we're gonna select, uh, and the question, text the pass holder with certain range of check-ins. So group of pass holders at the same time, pass holders who've completed a certain number of redemptions, so that would be the ranges, and then pass holders who receive this message will have redeemed this many times. So I could say zero to one. Um, oh wait, I guess I can't. Well, that's a limitation I didn't know. That's always fun on a webinar. That's why we have um, this, is there anything else you wanna know about this request? So I would say put in, zero because that's the starting range put in the message that you want to put here and then say can this please be sent to pass holders zero to one um an additional part of that question i think is you know it seems like you want to be sending a different message to those different pass holders it's easiest, I, I know it could sound a little bit laborious to submit a form for each one of those test, text messages, but it is easiest for our end if you do it separately, um, just from a management perspective and to make sure that if we have a question maybe on the two to five text, we know we're communicating with you on that and it can just kind of reduce confusion. So the great thing is when you do submit this form, um, there's a little thing on the bottom that says, you know, do you wanna submit something else question mark? It'll take you here and we can just go through the system as well. And then it's very cut and dry for our team to execute on. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, so like Ashley said, this is um, one of the fun things about forms is that uh, our clients find unique ways to communicate to people or you know to request things. And so we're always trying to get better and more efficient about how we're laying these things out so that you guys can find easily what you're looking for. But Ashley did mention a critical feature, which is at the very bottom of that screen, there was that, you know, do you need anything else or do you have anything to add? because those messages are going to someone on our team, you're always talking to someone. So if you've got questions like, hey, I think I set this up right, but I don't know for sure, can you tell me? Someone's always going to be able to reply and just give you validation that yes, you did this right, or you know, maybe we should tweak the audience that you're looking at or um, kind of go through those processes with you too. So um, we are gonna look at that range to see if we can make the form a little bit better, but thank you, Amanda, for your question and hopefully um, that gave you a few different ways that you could submit that kind of request. Okay, great. Um, so I am going to take over for Ashley and talk about um, two big things. One, website integration, um, which is something that we're starting to move all of our clients towards. Um, website integration is such an interesting um, uh, option that's available for our clients because what we have learned is that linking strategy and a client's website is ultimately the um, biggest key in building a foundation that's going to help your past be successful for, you know, its entire lifetime um, in market. So I'm going to talk about just how that website integration works. I'm going to give you a few places where you can check out resources. But one thing to note is that we are encouraging all of our clients to move to having their passes integrated on their website just because it is a great way to improve your domain authority. It's an amazing um, user experience for the people who are going to your website and looking for things to do. Um, and it gives you to make adjustments on your page, like um, adding videos or adding CrowdRiff modules. So I'm going to review and share my screen some of these options um, uh, that you have available to um, integrate. So the first thing to know about um, you know, this process is when we send over um, our integration document, it looks like this. It is a worksheet that includes this, what we call the embed code. It's this big chunky piece of code that signals to your website that you're pulling in a piece of um, your Banwango offer page. Um, and you can see that these embed codes are actually specific to the offer that you're looking at and specific to your um, subdomain, which is of course where your mobile passports live. Um, so this embed code, if you just place this into your website, you won't see anything pull up because this is basically just a flag to your website that you're about to add something really important. And those important elements are these different modular elements which our team creates for each client. It is the product card or sometimes people will refer to it as the offer card. It's our how it works module, which of course goes through those steps for signing up for and using a passport. And then it is of course your venue list module, which will have um, the uh, ability to dynamically populate all of those venues that are included in um, your passport. Um, these were some internal notes, so I'll just go ahead and delete that. But of course, you also have the option to um, insert just a sign up button, which is a similar strip of code um, as these look. Um, so those sign up buttons are something that we're adding to our forms now as more and more of our clients are integrating. And I'll show you guys an example of what that looks like. First, I want to show you really quickly um, just an idea of what your landing page could look like as you integrate these elements. So this is our lovely client in Hampton. They have launched their Toast to the Coast passport, um, which you see here, and this is actually their website. So this is a page that lives on their website. It is not um, their subdomain page, but instead this is a website that has 
you know, their um, specific uh, navigation up here. People can learn, you know, where to stay, just a little bit more about Hampton and this passport itself. But you can see here, one of the interesting things is that we are moving to a system where um, we're encouraging our clients to customize things so that they can change them easily on their site. So in this instance, you know, this is description text that um, we had um, captured for the client and they are putting on their website via a text box. Um, and that's wonderful for them because then they can actually go in and they can change the headline as needed. They can change this description text if things change for them or if they want to add more flavor or bullet points to it later. And then this is the product card or offer card, which you can um, place on these landing pages. And this is a great option because when someone clicks this get yours button, the form slides out from the right side of the page so that nobody ever has to leave your website in order to get information about their passport. Great. And then the next piece is this, of course, the how it works module. This um, is something that, you know, we have some standard language for this. If you ever want to customize it, that's an option as well. But this just gives you an idea of the usual steps to signing up for and using your passport. And then lastly is this venue list, which for some of our clients is broken down into their categories. So for instance, you may have your categories broken down by the kind of tacos that someone's going to taste on your trail, or maybe it's a particular neighborhood that you're breaking things out in. Um, Hampton has um, just, I think, under 10 venues included in their passport. So they have their venue list um, as just a list here. Um, but it also includes these different discounts that are available at these locations um, for their check-in challenge. The really wonderful thing about using the venue list module from our system is that it's dynamic content. So say, for instance, that Capstan Bar and Brewing Company um, decides that instead of offering $2 off a four-pack, they want to offer a buy one, get one for a pint. When that offer changes in our system, you won't ever have to worry about your landing page being out of sync with your mobile passport because this will dynamically change um, because it's connected to that code from our system. So some of our clients like to do more custom pages, um, but many of our clients find that this venue list module is very useful for them because it's always going to be reflective of the um, uh, information that's within your mobile passport. So if you need a refresher on this, if you're ever curious about what it looks like to actually put these things into your backend, there's actually this really valuable blog that's a resource. I will link it on um, the page where you can actually watch this video on banlingo.com, but you can also just find it in your blog section here. Um, and this actually goes through um, from beginning to end how it looks to integrate these elements onto your landing page. So you can see here, we're starting with that embed code, pasting that in, and then going to our product card and our venue list to paste those into our um, back end here. For some clients, this may be a text module. For other clients, it may be a code module. Um, the important thing is that when you place these things in, there are some common um, issues that we see arise from time to time. And those issues can take a few different shapes, but one of the important things about this um, worksheet that we said ahead of time is there are some of these work-throughs um, that you can kind of look at here to troubleshoot, or you can always reach out to your client success manager or the marketing team to understand and, and get help if maybe something is not um, configuring correctly on your um, landing page. Um, so I'll circle back to any questions that you guys may have about this. Um, feel free to put those into the chat or the Q&A um, section. If you want to know more about um, injecting these elements into your landing pages, um, happy to talk through any of those questions either on this call or a call that um, we can schedule after this webinar. 
So the other um, helpful tool that you have access to is um, Van Wango's graphic design services. So some of you may know this, some of you may not, but Van Wango offers free graphic design to our clients. Um, some of our clients will take uh, advantage of this when they're building out their past assets. So if they want a custom icon for their home screen image, or if they want um, you know, header image that we build out, that's an option that's available during past build out, but you can also always access this again through that dashboard that Ashley showed you earlier. This link always lives um, in that dashboard so that if you decide, you know, a few months after you build your passport that you want some collateral to support marketing that passport, you can request that through this collateral request form. Another lovely Asana form um, probably looks familiar to you guys after Ashley has gone through those other options. But this collateral request form is available to you. Um, requesting collateral from our team does not cost you anything extra. One thing to note is that we will deliver print ready files to you, but printing any of this collateral or distributing this collateral to merchant partners or visitor center locations. That's something that's up to your team. So if you decide that you want some collateral to support your passport, um, one thing to know is that we do have a bit of a queue in order to accommodate all of our 250 clients at this point. Um, so to get a first draft, it usually takes about 10 business days after you submit this request. And then edits um, from then go on um, a uh, go into the queue so that if you know you receive that first draft and you're like, okay, this looks great, but some of these bullet points need to change. In Asana, you can request that change, we'll make that change, but um, it's important to be patient with us a little bit um, as we work through those um, with you and just understand that um, we do have you know, a queue that we're working through and we're working hard to meet everybody's drop dead deadlines, which is something to include as you submit your collateral here. So just for our team's sake, it's so helpful to know when do you need to send this to your printer? That said, you know, it's important that you guys build out a little bit of time, one, to get your first draft, which is that 10 business day timeline. But we can always expect that you're going to have a handful of edits to give to our team. So it's important that you fill this out with plenty of um, time to spare so that we can make sure that we're hitting your deadlines for print. So some common options that you can request through this form are our posters and flyers. These are dynamic, again, so that you can select the sizes that you need. Um, or, you know, if you have something that you really is, um, it's special to your destination. So perhaps you've got a specially sized sandwich board that you need created for your visitor center. You can always select this something totally different option, which will basically just prompt you with questions about the different dimensions that you may need or what you want this particular um, uh, asset to look like. It's always helpful for our team if you include examples of what you like, what you currently have in market, or you know, if you just want us to take our templates and run with it, that's totally fine as well. You'll also notice here that there are a few other options that are kind of um, not your average request. And Wingo also does free video creation. These are templated videos that walk through the process of how easy it is to sign up for and use the passport. We have many clients who create their own custom videos using their um, internal teams. But if you want to take advantage of a templated video that talks through the ease of signing up for a passport, you can request that at any time here. Most of our clients, when they launch, this is one of the options we discuss with them. But in the event that you didn't take a zip on that uh, when you first launch your passport, just know that you can always request those. Many of our clients will use that video in social media promotion or in their earned media outreach. You can also request QR codes if you need them, 
Or if we created a piece for you, so say we created a poster or flyer for a check-in challenge that has pin numbers, and you added a brewery location to that check-in challenge, and now you need a poster for them, we um, will not automatically you know, know to create that new poster for you. So it's really important that you submit a request to let us know that you need an addition to an already created piece. And just let us know by dropping that file in, hey, this is the piece that you guys created for us. And now we need um, a poster for St. Arnold's Brewery with their pin number on it. So this form is available to you at any time. If you wanna create something new, make a change to something we've already created for you or do something totally different. Um, our marketing team is here to make sure that you are supported with this collateral and can really um, use it to promote your passports. Okay. Um, so we've covered a lot of ground. Um, we can get into Q&A. If you've been holding your questions for the end, um, feel free to submit them via the chat box or the Q&A. Um, Ashley, as we were going through these things, did you think of any kind of commonly asked questions that um, we can address here? Uh, no, I don't think so. I'm sure that there certainly will be uh, some, but I can't think of anything. You know, we just, as I mentioned in the beginning, wanted to make sure that we were getting this information about these new forms and processes out in one uniform while our client success managers and service managers are also kind of doing this on a one-on-one -on -one basis with our clients. Yeah, that's a great point. And this resource, again, will be available to everyone um, so that you can share it with your teams who may be joining and you want to um, point them in the right direction. You can find all of our webinars that we have done before in this resources section of benwango.com. I will add this webinar to um, the website um, likely on Monday. Um, so if you're looking for it to point to your uh, uh, team members or in the future, you can find it in this resources page under this webinar recordings. Or if you want to tune into some webinar that we've already done in the past, you can find them and watch them here um, with super easy access. And the other thing I wanted to point out on bandwingo.com, if you're not subscribed to our current client e-newsletter, which goes out at the end of every month, you can do that on bandwingo.com at the very bottom. There's this get your newsletter option here. And when you fill out this form, there's the option to identify yourself as a client. So that makes sure that you're added to that right list so that every month you can hear about, you know, upcoming webinars or, um, you know, new case studies that we've written or even what products we've launched recently so that you can get your inspiration for your next passport build. So if you're not already um, getting that newsletter, then make sure you sign up here um, so that you're tuned in to all of those important updates and um, upcoming webinars that you have access to. And Emily, what email address do those newsletters come from? Because I know some of my clients have been on that list. Um, I've sent them the newsletter to confirm that they had received it because they mentioned that they haven't. And it was getting caught up in either their spam or their uh, company's firewall. That's always an option too. So what email address does that come from? That email comes from marketing at bandwango.com. And if any client feels like they're not receiving it, feel free to reach out to your client success manager. We can always double check that you are on the list um, and just make sure that you know, you're getting the information that um, you need. Perfect. Great. Well, it looks like we did such a good job that we have no extra Q&A. Um, so thank you all so much for tuning in to this webinar. Again, you know where to find the recording if you need it in the future. Um, otherwise, we hope that you have a great rest of your Friday and thank you so much for your time. If you have any questions about what you saw here today, feel free to reach out to your client success manager um, to get more information or to um, start working on whatever's next. Thanks so much.